Hello chess lovers, Zolan here and in today's video I want to share with you an interesting attacking game played by Soviet chess grandmaster Viktor Korshnoi. Although at the time of this game Korshnoi still was not a grandmaster, uh, he would earn grandmaster title six years later in 1959. Meanwhile this is year 1953, we are in Leningrad and Korshnoi's opponent is Soviet chess master Viktor Artsukevich. Artsukevich opened up with d4 to which Korshnoi answered with knight f6, c4, c5, d5, d6, Korshnoi is going for Benoni defense. A little bit cramped opening, but usually when Black is managing to go for a breakthrough, is suddenly managing to activate his pieces, there we have it, Black is undermining white center, yeah, he's activating his pieces and uh, usually is getting a very dangerous attack. Queen c2 was a novelty at the time, usually bishop e2 is the move which white chooses and queen c2 is actually a dubious decision and now we will see why. Takes, takes and here we go guys, can you find Korshnoi's next moves? Actually Korshnoi went for a combination which requires a deep calculation. He went for knight takes e4. Knight takes e4, bishop f5, pinning the knight, taking it, knight fd2, queen e2, putting further pressure, bishop f3 protecting the knight, but this pins looks very ugly. Here comes bishop takes e4, and then we have f5. Now Korshnoi will win back the sacrificed piece. White used his precious time to castle kingside, f takes e4, rook e1, and now what to play? White is threatening to win this pawn. Uh, here Korshnoi first announced a check from d4 and after king h1 played e takes f3. He is sacrificing his queen. Rook takes e7, rook takes e7, now there is a mating threat, also this pawn wants to step forward, that's why white hurried to get rid of that pawn, although according to Stockfish bishop d2 is an alternative, but definitely uh, white was not interested in allowing this pawn to step on f2, that's why looks logical, he hurried to get rid of it, but since the first rank is not covered, we have rook e1 check, king g2, knight d7, so materially, what do we have? Korshnoi only has a piece, a knight, actually, and a rook against a queen, right? But a white king looks very vulnerable. This bishop is a monster, guys. And that's something which gives black a huge compensation. Materially, white is doing great. He even stands better. But yeah, black pieces are very active. Rook b1 protecting the rook, already white wants to develop this bishop, there came rook e8, bishop d2, rook e2 check, the rook uh, 1 e2 check is better, and then knight f6, knight h5 check, rook f2, this is even better, but Korshnoi chose a different line, a less venomous line, he played rook e2 check, he's going after a material, and then he played rook d2, queen takes d2, rook b1, white resigned, although I guess it's a little bit early to resign, white could still uh, proceed. Now materially black is doing better, two minor pieces and a rook, but yeah, white could still once again proceed, like b3 play, for example b3, if king f7, queen e2, now black should uh, cover the e6 square, and then white could start harassing these queenside pawns. Artsukevich strangely hurried to resign, and after rook b1, Korshnoi won. Anyways, uh, Korshnoi's game was impressive, 94, and then he made a bold queen sacrifice and managed to prevail. Feel free to share this game with your friends as well, and in the end, let's solve a chess puzzle, it's white to move and win the game, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video, take care.